Hi, morning everybody. Welcome to episode two of Allotment Days. A um, little bit chilly still outside, uh, but as you can see, um, the sun started to come out, just walked into the greenhouse. Um, I'm going to let you have a look at some of the uh, fruit on the allotment this morning. I'm not going to make it too long this clip because I think the first one was a bit too long. Uh, we'll take a look at the currant bushes and the strawberries and the raspberries. Um, um, see how we go. Right, so I'll have to put my coat on because it's still a little bit cold. See you in a moment. This is the old uh, strawberry patch. Um, you know what it's like at the end of every year. They all become really uh, thickened up and you get runners everywhere. There are docks in between them all. You know, you, you can't make head and the tail of it and you just have to clear it out the bed sometimes every two or three years. Um, we moved uh, most of the runners last year over to, onto the new half plot. Um, there were some left over. There's about 30, 35 inside the, uh, the greenhouse there. I've been watering those, and I'm probably going to have to use a lot of those to replace the ones that the, uh, the rabbit set. Um, but I, I dug all the strawberries out on Friday, Friday the 11th. Um, ground was really, really wet. Um, put the strawberries that I lifted here on the bed next to it. And you can see they've not dried out because it's been that cold. I give them a water on Friday. Um, and there's probably about, oh, I don't know, maybe 50 or 60 plants. Um, I threw all the really thick and big uh, old plants away, as you should do after about three years. Um, and they're a mixture of one and two year old plants of those. So I'm going to put those back in. And they're going to go at this side of the, the two apple trees that we put in put those in a couple of weeks ago, they're only about £3 a piece from uh, Aldi I think. Um, so I'm going to put maybe four rows of strawberries at this side and then at the back of the trees I'm going to put about four comfrey plants. Now there are two comfrey plants here, you can't really make them out because they're sort of mingled in with nettles but there are two, there's one on the left there and one on the right and they're a brilliant plant. Um, I grew them from seed. I, I sold about 30 seeds, only two plants uh, germinated, um, but they've been fantastic. I've had them the last two years, and once you get into about May, they're about <clears throat> three foot high, cut them off, put the leaves in a big bucket, squash them all down, cover them uh, with some water, leave them for a month, strain it off, and you've got a perfect uh, feed for your tomatoes and your cucumbers. Um, within about six weeks of you cutting them back, they're ready to, believe it or not, they're ready to cut again. Um, you know, again, about three feet high. Um, and they did that three times last year. Um, they started to grow again the fourth time, but um, they weren't really big enough and everything had stopped um, growing, you know, in the greenhouse. Um, but they're perfect plants. Um, cost you nothing and you can take root cuttings as well so my plan this year is to you're supposed to get your spade dig in a couple of inches below the surface uh, lift it up cut it up and you know they grow like wildfire um, I've seen other people do it on YouTube so I'm planning to do maybe four or five plants and they'll go just around the back here as I said they're a great plant um, you can use the leaves just to layer up in your compost bins and that they act as an activator and they help to break down your compost more quickly. You can put them beneath your potatoes, you know, if you're putting them in the ground, dig out your furrows, put a layer of uh, comfrey underneath and they act as a feed for your growing uh, potatoes. Um, and you can make uh, a liquid feed for your, your tomatoes, your potatoes, you know, whatever else you want to feed. So they're, they're an absolutely fantastic plant. Look like nothing now, but just wait in a few months time. Uh, they'll be like triffids over the back here, I hope. Um, I watched Aaron's allotment last night, his latest update, and he were in a, a bit of a, a, a quandary really about whether or not to cut back his current bush. Um, and I think he's right. It, it probably is a little bit too late now. Um, Still cold on the morning, but it's warming up nicely. Um, and within a week, 10 days, I would imagine the buds on these uh, bushes are going to be opening up. Um, I cut these back 
about three, four weeks ago. You should prune them between December and February, if I remember correctly. And the idea is you cut out the dead wood, um, cut out any plants that are, you know, any, sorry, not plants, uh, branches that are pointing downwards or growing inwards. Um, but you shouldn't really prune your plants until they're three or four years old. And as you can see, these plants are about four years old. They're in our garden at home. Um, you know, like lots of things in the garden. Uh, they were cramped out by the other plants, so I brought them down here. And the one on the left is a, is a red currant. This one's a black currant. And on the black currant, you can see where I've cut out all the, the dead wood, and there's quite a lot of it. And I've cut it, you know, within about two or three inch of the bottom. And I cut it all out because all the new shoots made quite a nice, nicely shaped plant. The red currant at the side, um, that's a little bit more open in, in its habit. Um, and I didn't cut all the dead wood out because you can see, um, whilst there is older wood in there, it's not really what you'd call woody. Um, it's still growing. And if I'd cut out all of those darker, thicker stems, I'd have been left with hardly any plant. So rule of thumb really is cut maybe a quarter to a third of the old wood out. Next year we might have more uh, sort of side branches, new branches, and I'll cut out a little bit more. Um, and this is what I cut off. You can see here. Cut that off the two plants. Um, and they're actually uh, quite robust to the branches, and I'm going to use them. Uh, in with my peas because I grow a, a low growing uh, pea, I don't grow a, a tall one um, early onward and Kelvin and Wonder um, and they should make some nice uh, pea sticks um, so uh, you know never throw anything away really is the motto because uh, you can always use you know what you what you cut away in some way same applies to uh, raspberries down the left border here there's, looks like there's nothing there, but that's full of uh, autumn raspberries. I cut them down about, what, maybe three or four weeks ago. Um, there are no shoots yet, I don't think. I've not looked in the last uh, couple of weeks. I transplanted some up into this section, so they'll be a little bit thinner. But as we come down, you can see there are, there are more roots and you can just see you can just see the shoots coming so this is the right time to cut them down if you've not already done them you should have done them possibly a little bit earlier it depends on your aspect um, but you can see you don't want to leave it much later because you know they're hard to get to and you, you worry about cutting out some of the new shoots but they've started to grow now um, we also put some some transplants down um, beneath the fence there at the bottom you can just about make them out so uh, we started with about five meters linear meters of uh, raspberries autumn raspberries now we've got about 20 meters um, so you you know you get loads of runners and suckers you can take them off stick them in the ground in winter or at the end of the season um, three plants um, and they were so so productive last year we made dozens of jars of jam at pounds and pounds of things punnets and punnets full of lovely big uh, autumn raspberries so uh, you need some raspberries uh, on your plot I would say I back at the strawberry bed um, sorted through the the strawberries that I'd pulled out the other day uh, pick the best ones out and as I said I've just put in about four rows um, of I think they're mostly first year plants um, so hopefully we'll we'll get a few strawberries this year and next year um, I might take them out of this bed uh, in future and just fill it completely with the uh, comfrey because um, it's such a, a valuable thing to grow um, so many uses for it uh, but for the time being uh, surplus strawberries have, have gone back into this bed Right, so I'm just going to go into the greenhouse now and uh, I just want to show you a few things that I bought at the Edible Garden Show the other day. 
back in the greenhouse now and I just want to show you these two things that I bought at the Edible Garden Show on Saturday in Coventry. I bumped into Mick Poltney, the compost king. He's a great guy, uh, really knows his stuff when it comes to compost. And I bought these two items. Uh, a bottle of liquid fish, which sounds a little bit odd, um, but I'm going to use that as a, a foliar spray in my greenhouse on the tomatoes and what have you. But I might also use it as a feed, alternating it with a comfy feed. £2.50 for the bottle. Dilution rate is quite impressive. One millilitre per litre. Uh, so by my reckoning, half a teaspoon should mix in with probably two gallons of water. Um, I've not smelt it yet, but looking at the dilution rate, it must be pretty pungent stuff. The mycorrhizal fungi, I think he charged me a fiver for that. But you only use a pinch as you plant things out and it's supposed to promote um, root development and aid the uptake of nutrients and water. So you get a much more vigorous plant and hopefully a better yield as a result. Uh, I'm going to put that under my uh, shallots a little bit later on when I, when I pop them into modules and I'll, I'll use it underneath most of my plants as I plant them out. So, two, two great products, I think. Uh, they look really promising. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed watching um, and that you come back and look at future episodes. It's still a little bit barren on the allotment. It's, it's all soil. I've no raised beds. So you, you look around and you think, well, what is there to talk about? Uh, but there's always something to do. And, and I'll share that with you as, as I do it. Um, and it'll become a little bit more colourful as the, the season progresses. So... Have a great week. Don't work too hard, unless there is your own, your allotment. Okay, take care.